Welcome to our online. Now let's take a different look at the gravitational redshift. Let's say that a photon is trying to get away from the sun, is trying to get away from the white dwarf, or is trying to get away from a neutron star. Well, in each case it must overcome that potential energy difference between being on the surface and then being free out in space away from the gravitational pull. And the total energy of a photon at the surface is going to be hf, the energy would have in space, unencumbered by any gravitational force, times 1 minus the potential energy at the surface of the, the star in this case. And realizing that if this number becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, which it will when we have an object that is more and more dense and therefore has a much stronger gravitational force, Eventually, it can happen that this quantity right here, this gm over rc squared, can become as large as one half. That means that the total energy will be equal to the energy of the photon h times f times one minus a half, or only half hf. In other words, if the potential energy to overcome becomes equal in magnitude to the total energy the photon has, the photon will no longer be able to get away from the surface of the object. And so it's interesting to figure out how big that quantity will become when a photon is trying to get away from these various types of stars that we have in the universe. So let's try to figure it out for all three of them and see if any of them will result in a fraction here that becomes as large as one half, preventing the photon from getting away gravitationally. All right, let's do that. I'm going to need my calculator, of course. And let's first try the sun. So for the sun, we're going to calculate gm over rc squared, and we're going to use the radius of each of these objects. So g is going to be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. m, the mass of the sun, 2 times 10 to the 30th, divided by the radius of the sun, which is 696 thousand kilometers which would be millions of miles so that's times 10 to the sixth and then we multiply that times the speed of light squared three times 10 to the eight quantity squared 6.67 e to the 11 minus times 2 e to the 30th divided by 696 e to the sixth let's say that's right 696,000 yes that's correct and divide by 3 e to the 8 squared equals, and notice that will be 2.13, 2.13 times 10 to the minus 6. That would be the fraction, the total energy required to get away from the gravitational pull of the sun all the way out to infinity, so to speak. And notice that it's much, much smaller than one half, so photons have no problem getting away from the sun. How about a, a white dwarf? Let's say we have a white dwarf that has the mass of the sun, but we know that the radius of a white dwarf is approximately the radius of the Earth, which means that this will now give us a, a larger fraction, gm divided by rc squared. It's going to be, again, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times, let's say, the same mass of the sun divided by, now the radius will be like the radius of the Earth, which is 6 million three hundred and seventy eight thousand meters and we multiply that times c squared three times ten to the eight quantity squared and let's see what we end up here so we take 6.67 e to the 11 minus times 2 e to the 30th divided by 637800 and divide by 3 e to the 8 squared equals and notice now we have 2.32 times 10 to the minus 4. You can see that photons will lose much more of their energy as they're leaving a white dwarf compared to leaving the sun, but yet that fraction is very, very tiny compared to one half. So again, easily, the photons can easily get away from white dwarfs that have a mass of the sun. Now let's try a neutron star, and let's say a neutron star that has twice the mass of the sun, because neutron stars have a minimum mass of 1.4 times the mass of the sun. So in this case, 
and of course also much smaller in radius or in diameter so gm over rc squared for a neutron star would be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 let's say twice the mass of the sun 4 times 10 to the 30th divided by they have a radius of about 10 kilometers so we'd be 10,000 meters and again the speed of light squared so we get 6.67 e to the 11 minus times 4 e to the 30th divided by 10,000 and divided by 3 e to the 8 squared equals and notice 0 0.296 that's almost 3 tenths in other words if we take the total energy which would be 1 minus this, or 1 minus this. Notice we only have 0.7 of HF left. In other words, photons can get away from a neutron star, but they lose a significant portion of their energy, and therefore there will be a huge redshift for the photons leaving neutron stars. So that would be quite a shift, yet unless it's 0.5, they can still get away. So now we're kind of wondering, what about black holes? Well, we'll get to that in a future video to see how we know that light cannot get away from black holes, assuming that photons, even though they don't have mass, act like they do, and therefore, does the photon have enough energy to get away from a black hole? Well, we'll see that. Stay tuned.